Have you ever been told that osteoporosis is just a normal part of aging? That there's nothing that you can do to stop your bones from thinning over time? Well, that's simply not true. Today, we're diving into the real causes of osteoporosis, from hormonal changes to nutritional deficiencies, medical conditions, and lifestyle choices. But more importantly, I'm gonna show you what you can do to strengthen your bones and to reduce your risk of having fractures. Stick around because some of these causes might surprise you, and you'll walk away with actionable steps to keep your bones strong for life. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and also a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a bone fit certified fitness instructor. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year. And I am so pleased to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. So you may have heard that osteoporosis is just a normal part of aging and that it's unavoidable, but that's not true. While aging can be a contributing factor, it's not the direct cause of osteoporosis. Our bones are constantly renewing, just like other cells in our body. Old, worn out bone is broken down and new bone is formed to replace it. During childhood and adolescence, bone formation happens faster than bone breakdown, allowing our bones to grow longer, thicker, and stronger. By the time women reach 18 and men reach 19, about 90% of our peak bone mass is already developed. The remaining 10% forms throughout the 20s, with most people reaching peak bone mass by about age 30. After that, bone breakdown gradually starts to outpace new bone formation. This shift happens slowly, but over time, it can lead to a net loss in bone density. However, osteoporosis doesn't happen just because of aging. There have to be other contributing factors at play, like diet, lifestyle, hormonal changes, or medical conditions. So while aging plays a role, it's not an inevitable cause of osteoporosis. The good news is that there are steps that you can take to slow bone loss and to protect your bone as you age. And after we discuss other causes for osteoporosis developing, then we're going to discuss what you can do to mitigate the risks of osteoporosis and to improve bone health for the long term. So did you know that estrogen plays a huge role in keeping your bones strong? Drop a yes in the comments if you did or a no if this is new to you. Another potential cause or contributing factor for osteoporosis is hormonal changes. For women, menopause brings a sharp drop in estrogen, especially in the five to seven years that follow menopause. Not all women develop osteoporosis, but this dramatic decline in estrogen can increase the risk. Though again, it's not the sole cause. Other factors have to be at play for osteoporosis to fully develop. Estrogen, specifically in the form of estradiol, has a significant impact on bone health. Estrogen contributes to helping stimulate the formation of new bone, while also slowing down the breakdown of existing bone, while at the same time helping to reduce inflammation in the body. This means that estrogen, especially estradiol, contributes quite a lot to bone health for women. For men, testosterone actually plays a similar protective role. Low levels of testosterone can lead to having weaker bones and risk factors for having low testosterone include chronic sleep deprivation, being overweight, having type two diabetes, and having hypogonadism, low testosterone production. Unlike estrogen in women, testosterone declines gradually about 1% per year after about age 40. There's not a sudden drop off like in menopause for women. And this is why osteoporosis is less common in men. Statistically, 20% of women over 50 have osteoporosis compared to only five to 7% of men. When men do develop osteoporosis, the consequences can be quite severe. Statistically speaking, for older adults who experience a hip fracture, 
men have a higher mortality rate following a hip fracture. One study, which is listed in the description for this video, reported a 37.1% mortality rate at the 12 month marker for men compared to only a 26.4 mortality rate for women. Neither of these is a nice statistic, but women's recovery rates are better than men's. Understanding these statistics can be a real wake up call for the men that we love in our lives. I keep trying to convince my dad who has type two diabetes to do strength training to help maintain his muscle mass before he breaks a hip. I even joke with him saying, when grandpa breaks a hip, that's it. But honestly, it's no joke. So aside from my family drama, take this information and use it to help prevent fractures in yourself and in your loved ones. Other hormones that contribute to osteoporosis risk include thyroid and parathyroid hormones. Having an overactive thyroid can contribute to bone loss and keep in mind that that can happen from taking medication for an underactive thyroid. So this happens when your thyroid medication isn't carefully monitored by your doctor. So make sure that you're getting the amount of medication that you actually need. Having overactive parathyroid hormones or adrenal glands can lead to losing calcium from our bones. So the key takeaway is that hormonal balance is critical for bone health and staying informed can help you to take action before osteoporosis becomes a major issue. And coming up, we're going to talk about a huge mistake that people make that puts them at risk for osteoporosis without even realizing it. Another major cause of osteoporosis is nutritional deficiencies, and this can be a standalone cause all on its own. The tricky thing about nutritional deficiencies is that they aren't always obvious, which makes them a common mistake that people make. You can eat a seemingly healthy diet and still be missing key nutrients without realizing it. I know this one firsthand. I cook almost all of our meals from scratch. I have a child who has a life-threatening food allergy, and this means that we rarely eat out. I'm very nutrition focused, and I've always worked hard to feed my family in a healthy way. And yet, I've had a serious nutritional deficiency that caught me completely off guard. And this was a nutritional deficiency that was so serious that it could cause osteoporosis all on its own. For years, I believe that we should be getting our nutrients from whole foods, not from supplements. And I still think that's the ideal way to do things. But I've learned the hard way that when there's a gap, you have to bridge the gap. Ignoring a deficiency over time can have really serious consequences. So for me personally, my vitamin D deficiency was a major wake up call. Vitamin D is absolutely critical for calcium absorption. Without enough vitamin D, your body can't properly use the calcium that's in your diet. For strong bones, your vitamin D blood level should be between 30 and 100 nanograms per milliliter with an optimal range of between 50 and 70 nanograms per milliliter. I was shocked when I saw my blood test results. My level was at a 9.2, which was dangerously low. I thought I was eating well. I was getting outside, going to the park with my kids, doing all of the right things, but I was wrong, big time wrong. And looking back on the scenario in my life, it makes sense. I spent a lot of time outdoors, but I also wore sunblock. I'm not a person who eats salmon every day, and I also wasn't supplementing. So even with a healthy lifestyle, I ended up with a major deficiency one that could lead to serious bone loss. So for years, I've been working with my doctor to make sure that I'm taking the right amount of vitamin D for my body. And I'm sharing this painful lesson so you can learn from my mistake. Get your vitamin D levels checked every year if possible. If you live in a country where it's difficult to get tested, look into having private testing or into getting a medical exception. Because when it comes to bone health, you need to know if your levels are in the right place when it comes to vitamin D. So let me know, have you ever been shocked to find out that you had a vitamin deficiency? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about your experience. 
Other key nutrients for bone health, aside from vitamin D, include two other big players in bone health. Protein, which is essential for bone structure and repair, and calcium, which is the building block for having strong bones. There are many other nutrients that contribute to bone health, but these are some of the most important ones to watch out for in your diet. When we talk about nutrition and bone loss, it's important to acknowledge a sensitive but serious topic, and that's eating disorders. Anorexia and bulimia can lead to having severe nutrient deficiencies, including calcium and vitamin D, which can be direct causes for osteoporosis. Even if the eating disorder was in the past, bone loss can show up years later as a lasting consequence. I mention this not to bring up painful memories, but to raise awareness. If you or someone that you love has struggled with an eating disorder, it's especially important to monitor bone health and to make sure that those missing nutrients are replenished. Another major cause of osteoporosis is having certain medical conditions or taking medications that can directly contribute to having bone loss. So some common health conditions can weaken bones by affecting hormone levels, nutrient absorption, and how much inflammation is in the body and also how mobile we are. So this list includes having hormonal disorders that include having an overactive thyroid, having hyperthyroidism, which speeds up how bone is broken down, having diabetes, either type one or type two. This impairs bone quality and how our bones heal nutrient absorption issues. So this can include things like celiac disease. This is going to reduce the amount of calcium and vitamin D absorbed and also other nutrients as well. Inflammatory bowel disease is another one. This leads to having potentially chronic nutrient deficiencies and then having chronic liver and kidney disease. This disrupts calcium and vitamin D metabolism. So how our bodies are breaking these down and absorbing them. Autoimmune and inflammatory diseases is another category of medical conditions that contribute to bone loss. Rheumatoid arthritis creates chronic inflammation and also long-term steroid use can damage bones. Lupus and multiple cirrhosis, MS, increase bone loss due to the amount of inflammation and also side effects from medications that are commonly taken for these conditions. Reduced mobility this includes conditions like Parkinson's disease, having a stroke, spinal cord injuries, and also having paralysis. Having less movement leads to rapid bone loss. Cancer and sarcopenia. So cancer treatments can lower bone protective hormones. Sarcopenia, which is severe muscle loss, can also reduce strength and bone support. And then certain medications, some are used to treat conditions that we've talked about on this list, and those can weaken bones over time. Here are some of the most common steroids. So glucocorticoids like prednisone directly increase bone breakdown, leading to faster bone loss. This is a big time issue. Proton pump inhibitors like Prilosec, can also reduce the amount of stomach acid and make it harder to absorb calcium properly. SSRIs, so these are things like antidepressants like Prozac, Zoloft, and Lexapro. They increase bone loss, possibly by affecting our bone regulating hormones. There's definitely a connection there. Scientists are still working out how that happens exactly. Anticonvulsants, Epilepsy and seizure medications can interfere with vitamin D metabolism, which reduces the amount of calcium that's absorbed. Diuretics and blood pressure medications increase calcium loss through our urine, which leads to having weaker bones over time. Cancer treatments that block estrogen and testosterone. So hormone blocking therapies that are used in breast and prostate cancer can very much accelerate bone loss. Having a family history of osteoporosis or fractures also increases your risk for developing osteoporosis. So what's one healthy habit that you already do to protect your bones? Let's share our ideas together in the comments. 
Another major factor in developing osteoporosis is our lifestyle choices. Some of the medical conditions that we've discussed, like sarcopenia, which is severe muscle loss, are directly linked to how we live our daily lives. Muscle loss tends to increase as we age, but it doesn't have to. We have a choice in whether we maintain our muscle mass, but that takes effort. Consistently putting in the work to strengthen and preserve our muscles is key to maintaining strong bones. Why? Because our muscles and our bones work together. When we lose muscle, we lose bone. So if you wanna keep your bones strong, make sure that you're also maintaining your muscle mass. This can be done through strength training, through other weight-bearing exercises, making sure that you have proper nutrition that includes getting enough protein. Some of the factors that contribute to osteoporosis are out of our hands, but many are within our control. So instead of focusing on what we can't change, let's focus on what we can. I hope that you're seeing today the osteoporosis isn't inevitable. Many of the causes that we've discussed are contributing factors rather than guarantees. Yes, they increase the risk of bone loss, but that doesn't mean that the outcome is set in stone. There's always something that you can do to improve your bone health. I've seen this firsthand. My own vitamin D deficiency could have led to long-term problems, but instead I took action to correct it because of that, I don't have to suffer the long-term consequences of that big mistake that I made. And if you've made mistakes along the way, there's hope for you too. You can start making changes today that will help to protect your bones in the future. The bottom line is that you have more power over your bone health than you might at first think. Keep learning, keep taking action, and don't give up on your bones. So what are your next steps? Make sure that you're getting enough vitamin D and get your vitamin D and your calcium levels checked. Incorporate strength training into your daily routine. Be proactive about nutrition and lifestyle changes. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss future videos about bone health. And don't forget about the resources that are listed in the description for this video. So the question is, do you have a friend or a family member who needs this information? If so, please share this video with them. Together, we can reduce fracture risk and improve bone health for our loved ones. And I wanna hear from you. What's one thing that you're gonna start doing today to improve your bone health? Share it in the comments. I read every single one. Thank you for joining me today in the journey to better bone health. I look forward to speaking with you soon.